Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Okay, the, uh, how the impedance matching is done. So this is basically the basic plot diagram of a matching network. So usually what we have seen, we have a generator and then we have a, the transmission line and then it is terminated by a load, whether it is that's like L or it is open or short circuit. And this is the transmission line with the length L. So the transmission line is directly connected to the uh, load, right? So if, as we have known that there will be a standing wave for the signal within the transmission line due to the reflection um, at the uh, inner surface of the transmission line. Therefore, uh, the, there could be power losses during uh, the transmission. So therefore, to minimize or to avoid reflection or power loss, a matching network is introduced in between the transmission line and also the load. Okay, uh, there are uh, three types of uh, matching network. It is single stop matching, quarter wave length transformer, or uh, lamp elements or L section network. Okay, so. Okay, as mentioned, the impedance matching network is placed or is introduced in between the load and also the transmission line. And it is the matching network uh, values or the parameters usually designed so that the impedance seen looking into the matching network is Z0. So it is assumed that the load impedance will be uh, matched to Z0. So in this case, when we introduce the matching network, uh, the reflections on the left of the matching network, okay, on this side, will be eliminated, although they could be uh, multiple reflections as well um, after the matching network to the load. Okay, however, the effect will be uh, minimal if compared to the uh, losses within the transmission line itself. So why we need the uh, matching or tuning, okay, matching, uh, impedance matching also known as tuning. So to ensure maximum power delivered to the load, All right? So the line is matched to the load. So the power loss is minimized. Besides that impedance matching sensitive receiver components such as antenna, low amplifier, so it can improve the signal to noise ratio of the overall system. And also the impedance matching in power distribution may reduce amplitude and phase error. Okay, so it can improve in terms of the signal to noise ratio and reduce the error uh, in amplitude and phase as well. All right, so there are four main factors that need to be uh, considered in the selection of type of matching network okay, to be used. Okay, first, in terms of the complexity, so the simpler the design, the better. So as long as it satisfies the uh, basic requirement or specification, and it cost saving, smaller in size, reliable, less lossy than the more complex design. So next, the other factor is the bandwidth. Okay, so any type of matching network 
can ideally give perfect match or zero reflection at single frequency. However, if the system involves multi bands or more frequencies, so uh, it is preferable to have a system that can match uh, for a broad band of frequencies. And in terms of the implementation, um, depending on the application, okay, uh, sometimes, for example, tuning stop will be much easier to be implemented in waveguide if compared to other techniques. And lastly, uh, the adjustability, or is it easy to modify or to amend the structure or not? Okay, sometimes in uh, some application, the machine network may require adjustment. Okay, sometimes there will be uh, optimization process in uh, so that the system can be improved further. Uh, so the system with more flexibility or easy to amend will be preferable if compared to the uh, rigid or uh, fixed structure. Okay, we are going to look at the first technique uh, in uh, impedance matching, which is the single stop tuning. Right, so in single stop tuning, it will use a single open circuit or short circuit length of transmission line or a stop. Okay, from the figure, you'll see that these are the stops. Okay, additional element that included in the system. This is basically the matching network introduced into the system in between the transmission line to the load all right um, so it's either connected in parallel or in series in series to the transmission fit line at certain distance d from the load okay the uh, the uh, stop stop is introduced at distance D from the load. Okay, uh, stop is convenient to use and it can be easily fabricated if compared to lump element. Okay, lump element in which we need to deal with uh, the uh, circuit. Okay, lump element circuit. So it, it will be more complicated if compared to the stop element. Right, so two main main parameters that need to be considered in single stop tuning network. The first is the D, the distance from the load to the stop position. Okay, this is the stop position. So the distance D from the load and also the value of susceptance or reactance provided by the stop. Okay, so the value of susceptance or uh, reactance provided by the stop. Okay, so uh, there are two configurations. The first one is the shunt stop. Okay, this is uh, the left figure, um, basically the uh, configuration of shunt stop, while the uh, right hand side is the series stop. So for shunt stop, it is uh, preferred for micro strip line or strip line, while the series stop is preferable for slot line or coplanar waveguide. Okay, more details on the shunts and series stop. Okay, so the uh, shunt for shunt stop, the distance from the uh, uh, stop position to the load is chosen so that the admittance Y seen looking into the line at distance D from the load is in the form of Y0 plus G. Okay, so then the stop susceptance is chosen to be negative JB so that we can match this one, okay, the resulting a match condition. Okay, while for the uh, series stop, the D is chosen so that the impedance provided by the stop at a distance D from the load is in the form of Z0 plus Jx. So the sub uh, the stop reactance is chosen as negative Jx. Okay, so to uh, simplify this or to remove the 
uh, imaginary part so that it results in match condition. Okay, now let's look at uh, the processes or the steps involved in designing a single shunt stop. Right, so the shunt will be the parallel stop to the transmission line. Okay, this is the transmission line with the load. So we introduce the matching network in parallel to the transmission line or the shunt stop. So at this point, it could uh, the uh, stop could be an open or shorted stop. Okay, so uh, the first step is to plot the normalized impedance, load impedance. So ZL as usual. Once we have the ZL, so we can find the normalize uh, ZL and plot it and as usual draw the SWR circle from the center of the skin start and then plot the normalized admittance all right so admittance is the uh, translational of the ZL or it is in the opposite side of the ZL and then mark uh, the YL position and then mark you can drag down the uh, you can extend a line from the center of the Smith charts to the YL point using and look at the position using the um, towards the generator, okay, the wavelength towards generator. Right next, draw the 1 plus G beta circle, okay, the Smith chart. So here is 1, here is 0, so draw 1 plus J beta circle, so the radius is 1, the real part is 1, and J beta circle, so JB circle, so B representing all this acceptance value, um, that having the same radius R, okay, and then mark the intersection between the SWR circle, Okay, the from, from the first step, you have uh, draw the SWR circle. So you mark the uh, intersection between the SWR circle and also the uh, 1 plus JB circle. For example, like this. This is the SWR circle. For the uh, load and admittance. Okay, and then you mark the intersection. SY1 and Y2. Okay, and then draw a line from the center of the Smith chart to Y1 and Y2 and record the uh, wavelength for each Y1 and Y2. So you extend the line oops, from the center. Okay, look at the current position using WDG, wavelength towards generator and also Y2. And then calculate the D. The distance, okay, so the two parameters that you need to identify in designing a single shunt stop is the, uh, the D and also the L. So to find the D, you can compare the wavelength of the Y1 and Y2 to YL. So for example, your YL, your ZL is here, for example. So you got your YL somewhere there. Okay, so here you get the YL position, the lambda for YL, and here is the lambda for Y1, right? So you can calculate the D from uh, the load to, to the stop. Okay, load to stop, so this is D1, and the other one from load to The second line, the second part, so here is lambda y2, so you get your d2. Okay, by comparing the current position of the admittance, load admittance to the um, y1 and y2. Right, so in this case, you will be having two uh, options, whether to use d1 or d2. Okay, and then to get the start length, l. Okay, the stop length from the lines to the end of the stop. 
you need to record the real and imaginary part of y1 and y2 so here just now you recorded the current position in wavelength so now you need to record its position for real and imaginary part for example a plus g b and here a minus g b okay all right so then after that you will perform the um, tuning or matching impedance matching by introducing the susceptance you will introduce uh, in, um, you will tune the imaginary part so that you can eliminate the imaginary part for example here is plus jb so to eliminate this plus jb so you can introduce negative jb right so here is negative jb to eliminate this point you need to introduce plus jb so that it can cancel out all right so then you can get a match position one there all right so then after that you can calculate the l1 and l2 from the short circuit point okay in this case it's shunt and short circuit for example so from the um you need to uh, be clear with the condition whether you are using the open uh, stop or short circuit stop if you are using short circuit so then you use admittance uh, shunt for shunt you use admittance so for short circuit okay this is the smith chart okay for impedance we know that it will be uh, equal to infinity and it is open circuit for impedance but for shunt uh, we use admittance here it will be uh, equal to short circuit position okay so at this point it will be y open circuit okay so calculate l1 and l2 from the short circuit position so here is the short circuit position so you get the l 1 and L2 so here you get the if okay to get the L1 and L2 if the um, the position of the um, if the position of the 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 point that you introduce positive JB something somewhere here positive JB okay one uh, 0 plus JB so you will calculate the length L1 JB1 so the length from the short circuit point okay that give you L1 so to easily calculate the L1 so the if the uh, the JB1 position is less than 0 0.25 lambda so you can calculate the L1 uh, by simply uh, adding the current position plus 0 0.25. If the position of JB1 is more, the value is more than 0 0.25 lambda, so you'll be subtracting. So the L2 will be equal to the current position minus 0 0.25 lambda. Okay, this is for short circuit you are referring to this point if it is open circuit stop okay so you'll be comparing to this point okay so here it will be zero so the l1 you can get straight away l1 here let's look at an example for single stop shunt for a load impedance zk l equal to this value, design two single stop short circuit. Okay, uh, it is shunt, so it is parallel, so this configuration, and then it is short circuit stop. Okay, short circuit stop. So we will be using admittance y is the of z to match a load of z naught. Okay, z naught equal to 50 ohm. Assuming that the load is matched to 2 GHz frequency and consists of resistor and capacitor in series. Okay, so the first step to uh, solve this is to 
get the uh, normalized impedance. So 60 divided by 50 minus J80 divided by 50. So you will get 1.2 minus J1.6. Okay, next, you need to plot the uh, ZL and draw the SWR circle. So your ZL is the normalized impedance just now is 1.2 minus J1.6 so it's at the bottom and it's 1.2 1.2 here and this is your ZL point then draw the SWR circle okay from the center of the Smith chart and then plot the normalized emittance and mark it location using the towards generator wavelength right so from the center so the opposite position so this will be your y l okay and then mark the position of y l and also get the uh, towards generator current position okay next draw the one plus j beta so one here plus j beta, so circulating that area. You can mark intersection between SWR circle and to the 1 plus JB, uh, JB. So the pink and the blue uh, circle, look at the intersection point and mark it as Y1 and Y2. Okay, so now you have the intersection here, Y1 and also Y2, intersection between the two circles. And then draw the line from the center of the Smith chart to Y1 and Y2 and record the current location using WTG. So Y1, so you get 0 0.174. And then Y2 from the center is 0 0.324. Okay, at this point, Two for this uh, something like mismatch a bit maybe two three two three okay and then calculate d1 and d2 by comparing y1 and y2 to yl so yl is here so is here and then y1 is there so you can get the d1 right so d1 equal to 174 minus 0 0.064 so this is your d1 and d2 is 0 0.324 minus 0 0.064 okay towards generator all right so in this case you have two options whether to use d equal to 0 0.11 lambda or you want to use d2 0 0.26 lambda okay so you have solved the d now you need to get the l Okay, so from earlier plot, so to get the L first, you need to record the real and imaginary of Y1 and Y2, the value of Y1 and Y2. Right, so Y1 equal to 1 and it's crossing at 1.4, positive 1.4. So this is your YL just now. Alright, so and then Y2, it is equal to 1 minus 1.4. this point so it's minus 1.5 okay so once you have the um, y1 and y2 position so to tune right to tune y1 okay so you want to make it a match position so that it can be just one so one is match position here so you need to introduce negative j 1.4 so that we can eliminate this the imaginary part. So we introduce point 0 minus J14. So minus J14, 1.4. So it will be 24 is here. So we introduce minus J14 at this point. 
Okay, and then uh, you draw a line to look at the current position of this um, this tuning. Okay, so this we can call it as um, B1. Okay, the acceptance value of the first uh, admittance. Alright, so once you have this, then you can calculate the uh, get it position. Okay, 0 0.348. Okay, here is 0 0.348. Okay, and then since this is the stop shunt and it is short circuit. So for shunt, short circuit, here will be your short circuit position. It's 0 0.25. Look at the L value. If the L is larger than um, 0 0.25, so you'll be start subtracting this value to 0 0.25. Okay, so since 348 is larger than 0 0.25, so you subtract them, then you'll get L1. The length of the first stop will be 0 0.098 lambda. Okay, next. Same goes to the second uh, Y2. So you have negative J. So to eliminate this, you need to introduce plus J 1.5. So introduce plus J 1.5. Okay, here is 1.4, here is 1.5. And then got the position. Okay, read through the value 0 0.3435 here. It's 0, 0 point, eh, sorry, 0 0.156 lambda. And since it is lower than 0 0.25, so you will be adding both. Okay, 0 0.156 and 0 0.25, so you get 0 0.4 or 6. Okay, so from the earlier calculated value, D1 and D2, so now you have two uh, options, whether to use the first one by using D1 put the values in 0 0.11 and the length will be 0 0.098 or you want to use the second one with 0 0.26 and also the length is 0 0.406 lambda okay and it is the short if it is shunt but open then you'll be comparing to this point the open circuit Okay, so the length will be from here to your um, to this to this point to L2. Okay, and so on. Okay, for a single series top. Okay, so just now we have seen the uh, the shunt or the parallel stop. So now if you have a matching network introduced in between the transmission line and the load and it is in series, either it is open or short circuit. So you may follow more or less the same steps. However, for a series stop, we just uh, simply use the impedance. Okay, so for impedance mid start, you have the open circuit here and you have the short circuit here. Alright, so the first step as usual to normalize the ZL and then to draw the SWR circle. Next, you draw the 1 plus JX circle. So you have the reactance value and then plot the intersection between the SWR circle to uh, the, SW, uh, the to 1 plus JX. So now you have two intersections, Z1 and Z2. Then you plot, you mark the position or the current position of Z1 and Z2 to get the D. Okay, so record the position using a uh, wavelength towards generator and then calculate D1 by com and D2 by comparing it to the position of load. Okay, so you need to compare the load to stop. Okay, load to stop. To stop location or position and lastly to get the stop length as usual you need to record the real and imaginary part of uh, the Z1 and Z2 then you introduce reactance positive or negative J to eliminate uh, the imaginary parts and then you can calculate 
from the open circuit if the stop is open circuit or if you have a short circuit then you have to calculate the L from the short circuit. Short circuit for impedance in the left on the left hand side and open circuit on the right hand side. Okay, let's look at an, an example for a single stop series. Okay, match a lot a load impedance of Zek L to this value to a 50 ohm line. So this is your characteristic impedance using a single series open circuit stop. So in this case, it is open circuit. Assuming that the load is matched to uh, 2 gigahertz frequency and the load consists of resistor and inductor in series. Right, so as usual, the first step, you need to get the Zek L, normal as Zek L. So 100 divided by 50 plus T80 divided by 50 so you get 2 plus T 1.6 then you plot this into the um, Smith chart and then draw the SWR circle okay your ZL the normalized L just now equal to 2 plus T 1.6 so 2 plus J1.6 is here. So this is your ZL. And then draw the SWR circle as usual. Center uh, from the center of the Smith chart. And then draw the 1 plus JX circle. And then mark the intersection between uh, both circles using Z1 and Z2. Okay, so we have Z1 and Z2. So Z1 on top and Z2 at the bottom. Next step is to get the L. So mark the location of Z L, Z1 and Z2 in using WTG. Right, so for Z1 it is 0 0.17 something. 0 0.171. And then for Z2 is 0 0.33 lambda. And then to get the D, so you can uh, calculate the difference between uh, the Z1 and Z2 to ZL. Alright, from the loop to the stop. Okay, so this is your ZL. To the stop in this direction, WTG direction. So loop to stop. Okay, so load to stop for Z1. So if you look at the position to get uh, D1, load to stop. So this is the load position. Okay, the load position to get it to the stop, the first stop, this one. Okay, so this is your D1. So D1 basically here is 0 0.5 minus this position 0 0.208 and then plus from here to here plus 0 0.171. So you get 0 0.463. And for D2, it's Z2 and also Z load. So it's from the load to Z2 to the stop. Okay, from the load to the stop, load to the second stop, to the second sort of the stop. Here, this is your D2. So it's 0 0.33 minus 0 0.208. So you get this value. So you have D1 equal to 0 0.463 lambda, and another one is 0 0.122 lambda. Okay, next is to find the L. Okay, so to get the L, first you not need to record the uh, position of Z1 and Z2. So Z1 is plus 1 plus J1.3 and then Z2 is 1 minus J1.3. So to eliminate the first component, so to eliminate this, so you need to introduce minus J1.3. So minus J1.3 will be at the bottom here okay and then you get it for blank
Okay, it's swap length here 0 0.335 35 something 0 0.35 255 lambda okay and then you get the L from this is the uh, for the the question it is open circuit for for impedance open circuit is here so since the value is uh, larger than 0 0.25 so you'll be subtracting 0 0.354 to 0 0.25 so you get the L1 equal to this okay next to eliminate for the second Z2 so you need to introduce plus J1.3 so plus J1.3 you will be in that position okay so its wavelength is 0 0.13146 Okay, 0 0.146 and to compare with open circuit impedance so it is less so you will be adding 0 0.146 plus 0 0.25 so you get the second length so now you already have d1 and d2 so you include in the values in 2d the figure 040 0.396 and the D from the earlier calculation. Okay, that's the end of the first part of the impedance matching technique. So I'll continue with the um, transformer and also the quarter wave uh, length transformer and also the L-section technique uh, in the next video. Thank you.